All right, welcome uh, to the show. It's uh, three minutes past uh, three o'clock. Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, wherever you are in the Garden Route or the Karoo area, uh, if you happen to be in the Karoo area, uh, you are able to hear us on 107.4 FM. Or you might as well just go to our website. It is www.heartbeatfmsa.co.za. Uh, you'll be able to hear us anywhere in this whole wide world, wherever you are this afternoon. Now, this is a live broadcast from our studios in Mossel Bay. Uh, that is where I am broadcasting from. From my gezels ek hier vanuit ons Mossel Bay, is atelier. It's like a cool weer, a paar druppels het geval tussen George en Mossel Bay, toe ek op pad is hierdie een vandag. Maar dit is baie, baie lekker. Uh, what an honor for me, um, welcoming in the studio with me, um, Zimkita Williams Lolo, and we are talking all things building. We are going to talk about building control matters. Let me just take this opportunity to welcome you in our studio, uh, Zimkita. Thank you, uh, thank you. Very Zimkita very Williams Lolo. <laughs> Thank you. Do I pronounce that correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, just talk me into this. I, I wish to hear you clearly. Okay. Right. Go how on. are you? There you go. I can hear you much better now. Are you good? I'm good, thank you. And how are you? Thank you so much. Now, just tell me about your portfolio, your role at the municipality. Okay. I am an official under building control. I'm in the role as senior building inspector. So I'm supervisor to the building inspectors at, at the municipality. And how does it feel for you uh, being in this uh, position as a female? It's intimidating at times because in the built environment, especially in building on site, you would expect males mm -hmm. um, to dominate. Yeah. And um, I'm young as well, not only, f not only female but also young. But I, I enjoy it, I love it. It's a passion I've always had since high school. Mm. Yeah, and then we actually need to celebrate uh, the ladies in general and not like underestimate them. I, I happened to listen to a national conversation yesterday, uh, early night. Uh, so they were talking about uh, about uh, um, female in the workplace position as oh, we, empowering. yeah, we, we, we just celebrated uh, youth all over this month. So that's what the conversation was about in one uh, person said that, that uh, females should not uh, be underestimated uh, into whatever positions they they actually engage in life but I'm very proud of you as a young lady from this area in this uh, industry now um, we, we like I mentioned we're talking about uh, building control matters what is building control in a nutshell uh, Zamkita what would you say um, but building control is a division in the municipality which is responsible for the approval of building plans. Um, we look at the legislation, we look at the national building regulations and building standards mm -hmm. and we then approve building plans for construction for new buildings like that. It ensures as well that um, the relevant departments within council also give their input on those building plans. We refer building plan applications to Heritage, our Heritage and Aesthetics Committee for comment and we also enforce other applicable municipal bylaws. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's uh, interesting. Um, listen, I want to know from you, um, what is a building plan and, and, and how does the application process for building plans uh, mainly, uh, how, how, how does that work? A building plan is a drawing in which um, it details the specifications of a structure that's planned. Um, it is required by law and it must be approved by building control before any construction may start on a site. Mm. Now there are mainly two processes in which building applications can be submitted to the Moss Bay Municipality. Mm -hmm. First is what we call a manual submission. It's a mm -hmm. physical hard copy of the drawing. Mm -hmm. Um, you bring into the municipality with all the necessary supporting documents. These are um, sand application forms mm -hmm. that you get from council. The second is through an electronic submission done on the portal. There's mm -hmm. a, um, a, a collab portal 
that professionals register on. These mm. are architectural professionals mm. and they can submit the building plans online as well. Mm. And to add to that, there are two types of application one can submit. Mm -hmm. It's a minor application. I'll give examples for things such as carports, shade nets, um, garden shades, or boundary walls. Mm. are all considered minor things. All right. These drawings can be done by the owners themselves. Uh, they don't need to appoint an architectural professionals to do them. Mm. Then the other type of application is a full building plan application. These are normally um, projects to a scale that an registered architectural professional must compile mm -hmm. the, 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 the building plan for and submit for possible consideration with the council. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And, and yes? I was, I was just saying, in a nutshell, we can dwell or dive deeper into that, mm. but that's just a brief summary mm. a of how the application process works. And who can submit building plans uh, 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 in the registered owner of a property is responsible for ensuring that there are approved building plans for their property, for all structures on their property. Now the owner can submit to building control themselves or they can appoint or grant permission to a representative to submit mm. through a power of attorney. If somebody submits on behalf of the owner, this power of attorney must accompany all documentation mm. to council or to the municipality. Mm -hmm. Um, I must just also note, the owner, the registered owner of the property is responsible to ensure adherence to the obligations, particularly where um, they've granted someone else permission to submit on their behalf. Mm. The owner is still liable to adhere to the national building regulations. Mm. And what is the process, would you say, after uh, the building plan is now uh, submitted and they've been approved. Uh, what's the process now? After you've received approval, now the owner or the owner's representative, in this case the builders for example, must ensure before they start actual building or actual construction, they need to call a building inspector or call the municipality itself and they mm -hmm. can be directed to the correct person mm -hmm. in order to call for inspection. The first inspection, and this is also by law prescribed in legislation, is a foundation inspection. Mm -hmm. So there's more than one uh, inspection? There's more than one. We perform five. Mm -hmm. So as I've said, the foundation inspection, there is a floor inspection, mm -hmm. an open drainage inspection, a roof inspection and the last but not least the final inspection mm. that's when you've completed your building right yes. and uh, let's talk about the process after construction has been uh, completed then uh, what about that uh, process would you mind elaborating a little bit on that I think I'm going to dull a bit on this one <laughs> because it's one we tend to miss I yeah. think prop owners tend to miss okay um, once your building is completed, we need to issue what we call an occupation certificate. Now this is to say that it's built according to the approved building plan mm -hmm. and the necessary professionals and installers like your electrician, your plumber, um, have signed off on the installations and they confirm it's done according to regulations. Mm -hmm. It's important, owners need to apply for an occupation certificate or a completion certificate because moving into a property or moving into a new house without one is uh, an offence by law. Can you uh, get a fine or something like that? Uh, yes, you actually can. Wow. We, <laughs> we issue notices and um, if you, it's a notice to inform you you're committing an offence. Mm -hmm. After that, if you still don't obtain an occupation certificate, we um, there's a fine a next stage we mm. call a section 56 notice which is a fine okay. yes so that's why if you don't adhere to that yes mm. now the certificate the occupation certificate itself is issued after the building inspector has conducted conducted a final inspection mm. um, and the necessary documents as I've mentioned are provided there's also a fee applicable with council for an occupation certificate Mm -hmm. um, it changes or the tariff goes up every financial year. Mm. At the moment, I can say it's 685, but mm -hmm. in the next financial year, yeah, it will change. It will change. Yeah. So there's a fee, that's all I can say. Mm.
All right, I'm in conversation with um, Zemkita Williams Lolo, and uh, we are talking uh, about building control matters. Listen, I'm just gonna have a little uh, music break, and when when I come back, when we return, I'll uh, continue with uh, this uh, conversation with uh, Zemkita Williams Lolo, and she's from the municipality here at Mossel Bay. All right, welcome uh, back to Heartbeat FM uh, on our frequency 103.9 FM right along the coast and 107.4 FM if you're in the Kuru area. That's where you're able to hear us. Uh, just go to our website www.heartbeatfmsa.co.za. Uh, that's our web link and you can just simply click on uh, listen live. You'll be able to hear us uh, anywhere in this wide world now uh, it is wednesday afternoon it's the day number 19 for june 2024 uh, and i'm in conversation with uh, zamkita williams lolo she's at the municipality here in mossel bay zamkita i forgot now your your role again <laughs> my role is senior building inspector so the senior building inspector at the mossel bay municipality and um, she's a female, what an honor um, <laughs> talking to her at this moment. Now, just before we went to the music break, I asked you, we talked about the process after construction has been completed. Now, what can possibly hinder a certificate of uh, occupancy from being issued? The most common factors that hinder um, occupancy is when during constructions changes during construction changes get made. Now these changes are made without a building plan being submitted. Mm. So now at the end you're done building, you've made minor changes or big changes and you want your occupation certificate. Mm -hmm. The inspector during his final inspection will obviously pick this up. He'll note there's deviations. We call it deviations from the approved building plan. And this could be one major factor that would withhold an occupancy certificate being issued. Mm. The other common problem is building rubble being, that's being dumped outside the property and uh, not being cleaned by the time a final inspection is requested for an occupation certificate to be issued. Mm. So these are two main um, problems mm. we face when people want their occupations. Right. And uh, let's talk about the common issues the building inspectors encounter. That one of them. That's one of them. To add to it, to add to them, um, some of the common problems identified are people building without approved building plans, or they submit a building plan application, but they start building before the plan is approved. Well, they, they don't, don't wait. <laughs> they don't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Another problem or issue we um, see is people using the sidewalk or the street, sometimes the neighboring properties without consent from the owners to store materials, to store building rubble. It, it's a problem mm. we face quite a lot. Mm. Um, we get encroachment or people building onto green spaces or open areas. Um, that's that's outside their property boundaries mm -hmm. that's a common problem we also face and of late or most recent it's been stormwater problems between neighbors people diverting their additional mm. rain accumulated water to the next property mm. not in a considerate manner mm. or not in communication with the neighbor yeah those are some problems we're facing. Yeah, and yeah, it, uh, get, uh, it could get serious. It can, yes. Yeah. Especially the stormwater. It could have, it could have impl implications on the structures mm. or on your paving or on yes. your gardens. Mm. There's, there's a lot that could go wrong. And how can one request for copies of, of building uh, plans, Zamkita? You, one can request a copy of the uh, plans for their property through um, coming in physically into our offices. You can also send an email to our admin at mossabay.gov.za um, address mm -hmm. that would be directed to the relevant official department, department mm -hmm. to respond. 
and that's how one can get a copy of their plans. If the owner can't or is, is not the one requesting the plans themselves and an agent or representative is, they just need to provide permission as granted by the owner to get the plans. Mm. Just that email address again, it's admin at mosulbay.gov.za admin at mosulbay.gov.za Now the following questions have been identified as some of the most common questions you receive at building uh, control. Do we need building plans, applications for solar installations? <laughs> we get this a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Plans must be submitted for solar panels, regardless of when they were erected or when they were installed. Mm -hmm. A homeowner can draft their own plans for this. They don't need to appoint an architectural professional once again. Wow, that's interesting. And, and when are building plans uh, applications refer to the Marshall Bay Heritage and uh, or that committee? The building plans are referred to our Heritage and Aesthetic Committee um, in accordance with the um, National Heritage Resource Act. Mm -hmm. Nobody can alter or demolish a structure that's part or is older than 60 years without a permit being issued by the relevant provisional, provincial heritage authority. Mm. Now, they've also identified areas um, to form a precinct. Now, your actual house may not be older than 60 years, but it can fall within the precinct. And we would refer it to our heritage, our Moss Bay Heritage Aesthetics Committee, Committee. for the input and advice. Mm. Now, Zimkita, how do tariffs relating to building control? Uh, let's talk about that tariffs. How does that work? When you submit a building plan, there are scrutiny fees that are applicable. There's, I also mentioned, occupation fees mm. when you pay for an occupation certificate. These fees are calculated according to official tariffs that are approved by council for the applicable financial year. Mm. The fees for building plans must be paid in full before a submission can actually be scrutinized. And they are not refund refundable, I must just add. Mm -hmm. Once you submit, submit a building plan and you pay, mm -hmm. it's, it's that. You have to go forward with your project. Mm -hmm. Now, I just want to add on that as well. With the financial year end coming up, now the 31st of the 30th actually of june mm -hmm. um, the new financial year starts the 1st of july new tariffs will be issued for building plan fees for occupation fees and so forth a whole list by the council gets gets um circulated or gets published mm -hmm. uh, should an applicant or an owner who submitted a building plan have outstanding invoices with us for building plan submissions the payment for those plans must reflect on our system by the 28th of June. Mm. If they don't, the invoices will be cancelled and new invoices will be issued on the new tariff. Mm. And yeah, invoices, as, as I said, that are not settled will be cancelled. It's also very important to, 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 to remind applicants, owners, professionals, when they make a payment via EFT, mm -hmm to use the correct reference. A lot of people pay using the municipal rates account references and that money isn't allocated to building control. Mm. Then we either have to, they have to pay again. Wow, yeah. so it's important so that you make sure that you, uh, as you mentioned, uh, use the correct reference number. Yes, please. We try to highlight it on the invoices, we circulate in red, but please use the correct reference. And for anyone requiring more information or advice, who can they contact regarding building control matters, uh, similar like uh, what we talked about today or discussed? We're so fortunate here in Mossa Bay. Our building control department accepts walk-ins. Walk-in inquiries are welcomed, but they can also call our um, official municipal landline, the 044-606-5000. Mm -hmm. and asked to be diverted or to be uh, uh, directed mm. to building control. They can also send an email with their, for any query they might have mm -hmm. to our admin at mossabay.gov.za email address. Once again, that will also be directed to the relevant department for assistance. Um, we also advise owners and to, to, to contact registered professionals, mm -hmm. architectural professionals, who are familiar with the national building regulations 
and who can give them professional advice and help guide the, the owners in whatever building venture they might have that they also in planning mm. um, comply with the, with the requirements to the national building regulations. Wow. That's so much uh, interesting. Remember, you can uh, make contact uh, with them via email. That email admin at mosselbay.gov.za or the switchboard number 0446065000. That's 5000. Uh, so you can just make contact uh, with them. Uh, Zamkita Williams Lolo um, and female building inspector. <laughs> Inspector, am I right? Yes, yes, you're right. Senior yeah. building inspector. Wow, senior <laughs> building inspector. Not any building inspector. It's a senior female building inspector with the name of Zamkita Williams Lola. Remember this name. You're going to hear about this name <laughs> a lot in the future. She's building in Mossel Bay like never before. Listen, um, any last words from you? Oh, Kristen, no, thank you very much for having me. I've said a lot in the process of like building control covers. I've jumped here and there, but any of the questions we discussed could dwell, we could delve in it much deeper. So if anybody really has more questions or they want to more, more, know more on a specific topic, mm. they can contact us. We will gladly provide them the necessary information you know they need. Mm. Yes, and thank you very much for having me here. It's a pleasure. It was an honor for me being in conversation with you. Uh, I just want to tell you that currently in our main studio in George, mm -hmm. we also have a female technician, sound technician. Oh, wow. She's also young <laughs> and she's pressing all, all the lots of buttons in our main studio. And once again, um, uh, females should never be underestimated. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. <laughs> you should never underestimate females. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Listen, Zamkita, everything for the best. Uh, thank you so much. Um, go back to your respective department. Do what you do uh, uh, the best where you're doing it. Keep on making. I believe the people of Mossel Bay, the residents of Mossel Bay, your council, they are proud of what you guys at the building department uh, or building control department uh, does. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you so much. And I wish that we will have some good conversation again in the near future. Thank again, you. regarding building control and uh, building issues. Thank you very much, Christo. I, I wish we will in the near future yeah. as well. Thank you so much. That was uh, uh, Zamkita Williams Lolo. Um, we talked about all things building. Uh, right here at Mossel Bay. As I mentioned to you, this is a live broadcast from our satellite studio at Mossel Bay in our main studio. Um, our female technician, um, her name is Abby D. She's sitting ready. Uh, I talked to her on WhatsApp. Uh, so that's my story for today. That is my story for today. I'm very, very lekker gekeer hier van uit de Mossel Bay. So, you must not forget to schakel there, but schakel it without any further terug to our hoofdatelier in George.